Hello everyone, and welcome to Software Architecture Monday. My name is Mark Richards, and in this lesson, number 197, I'm going to show you a fantastic book called Communication Patterns, and actually describe some of the patterns within that book. You can get a listing of all the lessons I do in Software Architecture Monday on my website at developer2architect.com. This lesson is about this book right here, Communication Patterns, written by my friend Jackie Reed. As a matter of fact, um, I talk a lot about soft skills in uh, Software Architecture Monday, and this really is the quintessential guide. What I'd like to do in this lesson is really show you the structure of this book and also uh, highlight some of the patterns, the communication patterns in this book that really resonated with me. So thank you so much, Jackie. And also I will be showing images from the book, which of course uh, Jackie did say I can do. <laughs> uh, the book is broken up into four main sections, different kinds of communication. And that first and primary section is the first one, visual communications. Visual communications is what we a lot of times use in diagrams and charts and stuff like this. Look at all the patterns that Jackie talks about in this section. And these are broken apart into various chapters. As a matter of fact, I would love to talk about every single one of these, <laughs> but I'm going to let you read the book instead. However, I do want to show you some of the patterns which really resonated with me that I thought would be worthwhile to call out. That first one I loved, this mixing levels of abstraction. And until I read about this pattern, I didn't realize how much I actually do this. And what Jackie is talking about in this pattern is the level of abstraction in which we communicate something. For example, I'm going to work is a level of abstraction. And then she says, but we can also talk about going to work in terms of, oh, first of all, I get up and I have a shower and then I make breakfast versus going into an excruciating level of detail about my process of going to work. Now, any one of these three is fine, but it doesn't make sense to say, oh, I push back the covers, I sit up, I put my feet on the floor and then I have a shower. And so that's what she's talking about with mixing out levels of abstraction. And as a matter of fact, uh, most of Jackie's diagrams in the book are using C4 model. And this already gives us this great mapping and levels of abstraction, starting at a context diagram, moving to a container diagram, then over to the component diagram, and finally code the actual UML models. Well, this diagram is a great example of what we can not do effectively in C4. Uh, because what she's describing here is mixing the context diagram with the container diagram. Even though C4 does have all of these different levels of abstraction, uh, she illustrates that we constantly or continuously do mix these up sometimes. Another one that I actually talk about a lot and wanted to highlight was this whole concept of representational consistency. And it goes as follows. I may have this wonderful container diagram showing all of the interfaces and how they work of different components. But then I want to describe to you the overall flow of how things work. Wait a minute. Where were you? Because what I'm seeing here is fetch media, access the queue, persist. But where is that here? And do you see representational consistency is about following or guiding the user so that we don't get confused about what we're actually seeing right here. And that's a great section uh, that I wanted to highlight. Uh, another one I just had to highlight because I've seen Jackie uh, talk about this pattern in conferences is the relationship spider web. And hello spider is what she usually says. <laughs> and a little spider there. Uh, but this happens a lot when we have necessary coupling in our diagrams, but we start putting arrows everywhere and it's really hard to follow. And a lot of these diagrams actually start looking like spider webs. This pattern is really about redrawing our visuals to eliminate a lot of those cross arrows and stuff and the arrows hopping over another one uh, in order to make it simpler to convey our message and also communicate our solution more effectively. 
Uh, there is uh, one more in this section that I really wanted to highlight, and this is one that I just love. That the style we use also communicates. What's your impression about this diagram right here? I'm communicating that these two services right here talk through a cue. But there's another thing I'm communicating with the style that I'm using. It all looks very formal, doesn't it? It looks like this is actually the solution I am proposing and wanting you to implement. I'm going to redraw this a different way. It's the same architecture, but do you notice the style, in fact, communicates something different? This is a draft. And I love this pattern. Uh, I use this frequently. One of my favorite drawing tools is, in fact, Excaladraw. Um, but a lot of the other drawing tools, like Draw.io, for example, have adopted this sketch-like mode, uh, which I leverage so much when I'm wanting to convey an idea, not a final solution. And so those are four out of the many patterns that are so fun to talk about. Color overload, um, using icons, uh, all of these things we do with visual communication. Uh, moving on to part two, Jackie talks about multimodal communication. Uh, those things that are either written, uh, said, or described through gestures. And as a matter of fact, a couple here that really resonated with me, because I'm a victim to these, is simple language. In other words, Jackie shows this chart right here of ways we can write or speak that use complex or little used terminology. And if we convert that to simple or regularly used terms, we convey our message much more effectively. Uh, this is a great pattern, <laughs> one that I'm uh, uh, actually a victim of in both my writing and my speaking. <laughs> Another one I really liked in here is encoding mes messages. And one of the many patterns within this chapter was about gestures. When we speak, whether it be communicating an idea, an architecture, uh, or just getting excited about something, uh, Jackie's recommendation is to keep those gestures close at hand, and she kind of shows a boundary in this box. And I also am a victim of this because my gestures tend to kind of go all over the place, and it's very distracting. Another one, which I just had to include in this short video, was the rhetoric triangle. And this is a great way both on written and also presentation to really focus a complete communication solution. In other words, the three parts of the rhetoric triangle are ethos, which is our credibility and trustworthiness as a speaker or author as you're either reading their material or listening to them. And this intersects with pathos, which is really appealing to an emotional part and finally, logos, which is the applying or appealing to reason and logic. And what Jackie describes in this section of the book, uh, in this chapter, is really the combination and intersection of these to be an effective communicator. So moving on to part three, uh, Jackie talks about communicating knowledge. We have all this knowledge, all these ideas we want to communicate, and there's so many patterns she describes of this kind of communication. As a matter of fact, this one I love and do use quite a bit. And that's abstractions over text. Uh, the use of symbols, icons, to really convey something instead of using text. Um, Neil Ford and I leveraged this kind of pattern in our Fundamentals of Software Architecture book uh, when we developed all of our star ratings. Uh, we can use these kind of the, the circle pie pieces to really indicate visually a comparison or what we want to convey. It's a really powerful pattern. And of course, one of my absolute favorites, which is architecture decision records. <laughs> I talk a lot about these in Software Architecture Monday, um, but Jackie really does a complete coverage 
of ADRs, the structure, the content, where to store them, a whole culture developing around ADRs and how to incorporate these in your company, and also some really cool decision-making myths. Well, there is one final part, and that's part four, about communicating remotely. Something in today's world all of us do. And there are a lot of patterns Jackie describes in this section as well. Um, I had to call out one of these because I know I'm out of time. <laughs> uh, but one that I got uh, um, advice from, uh, from my friend Neil Ford. And that was to control notifications. And Jackie writes about this in her book about the fact that we get bombarded with all these notifications, whether it be on our phone, our iPads, uh, or whether it be on our computers. And we don't realize how distracting they are until we actually start turning them off. Try it sometime and definitely read this section because there's good arguments Jackie gives for managing all these bombardment of disruptions. <laughs> Well, those, uh, those are the four sections and kind of a very brief coverage and some of the patterns you'll find in this book. As I said, I talk a lot about the soft skills of architecture, but this is really the definitive guide on how to be an effective communicator as a developer and also as an architect. So thank you so much, Jackie, for writing this wonderful book and thank all of you for listening. And this has been Lesson 197, Communication Patterns, and specifically the book that Jackie Reed wrote. Um, please stay tuned in two more Mondays for the next lesson in Software Architecture Monday.